the first race of the evening, the Coors Light Sportsman with a veteran front row, Mo Davis and Kirk Meisner leading them to green. It'd be a great battle up front. Josh Fry, after a hard charging, Meisner finally gets past him at lap number 13. Lap number 14, just one lap later, Cole Roloffs and Weston Jewett tangle. Some thunder pieces come off, but both cars would be able to continue. Four laps later, the veteran Randy Veldman celebrating his 60th birthday spins a lap number 18. That set up a two-lap dash to the finish, and it was Jewett able to sneak past Josh Fry and take his first feature win of the season in the number 15 car. Josh Fry would be second, Kirk Meisner third, Paul would be fourth, and Tyler Naraki rounds out the top five in the Sportsman. The Engine Pro Superstocks were up next with Alan Davis in the number 33, leading them to the green flag. Davis would be able to hang on for the first 10 laps until a hard-charging Will Olmstead, the number 78, gets past Allen on lap number 10. We'd stay green with some hard-charging and side-by-side -side action until Scott Pemberton, in his first visit of the season, spins with just a few laps to go on lap number 22. When the checkered flag fell, Brian Van Zalen, after a few years off, boy, he's back in a strong fashion. He takes another win on the season. Van Zalen wins over Seth Moody, Joe Moody, Tony Davis, and Will Olmstead rounds out the top five in the Superstock feature race number one. The four cylinders were up next with Kyle Van Drunen and Kevin Gielhold leading them to green. Good battles up front. Bill Pease, a hard charging machine, finds his way up towards the front, makes contact with Gielhold while battling for the lead. Gielhold goes around backwards, sideways, and Hector Garcia Jr. nowhere to go. Pile drives into Gielhold. Both cars heavily damaged, but drivers would be okay. One lap later, lap number eight, Hector Garcia spins in turn number three and four. Setting up 12 laps to the extended feature 20 lap finish, it was all Bill Pease. He thought he had a good piece, and he did indeed. Bill Pease will win his second feature of the season. Corey Holtzlander would be second. Corey Pease, Sir Justin Ruloffs, and Matt Bugard rounds out the top five in the four cylinders. And the mini wedge is up next on Kids Night, and Ethan Hoekstra's win continues. That's four in a row for Ethan in the six to nine year olds, and his first feature win of his career. Rody Drolema takes his first feature win in the 10 to 14 year olds, the Good Humor Mini Wedges. The sportsmen will return to the track for their second of two features on the evening with the retro body style, the old Camaro, Nick Sherrington. With a great run, he would lead the field for the first eight laps till Austin Hall finally gets around Sherrington. At lap number nine, Randy Bellman and Kirk Meiser, two of the Wiley veterans, they tangle bringing out a caution on lap number nine. Meisner would return to the racetrack and lose a tire and spin it again in turn three and four, immediately bringing out the caution one more time. That would set up a two-lap battle between Austin Hall, Josh Fry, and Brian Tomey, but it was Hall. He was quick time, and he was quick enough to win the second feature race. So Austin Hall wins, Josh Fry second, Brian Tomey third, Holtzlander fourth, and Tyler Naraki rounds out the top five. The Engine Pro Superstocks were up next with Scotty Root and Corey Wabma leading them to the green flag. A mostly green flag race as Joe Moody spins early on lap number one. Other than that, it was an all-Moody show as his brother Seth Moody gets around Jerry Shepard on lap number four, and that's all it took. He was gone, drove off literally into the sunset. Seth Moody takes his second feature win of the season. The veteran Jerry Shepard would be second. His brother Joe Moody third, Tony Davis fourth, and Brian Van Zalen would round out the top five in the Engine Pro Super Stocks. And the four cylinders, your final feature of the evening, and what a fun front row. 71-year-old Donna Richter next to 16-year-old Bay Shook would lead him to the green flag. Richter would lead the first six laps until Justin Roloffs would come by with the number of red 22 go to lead at lap number six and seven. Then it was Holtzlander's turn. Corey Holtzlander gets her on Roloffs on lap number nine. It was looking good for Roloffs, and then Alicia Snyder with a hard, hard shot of the front stretch. She would be okay. Bell rung a little bit, but Alicia will be back. Hard crash for her at lap number 17. That's set up for three laps to go. The restarts have been key for both of these guys for Roloffs and Holtzlander, but this time it was the number one. It was Corey Holtzlander would hold off Roloffs. Justin Roloffs would have to settle for second. Matt Bugard third, Alex Ryder fourth, and Bill Pease would round out the top five, wrapping up the races for the evening. Up next is the Monday Night Race, June 10th, the third annual Money in the Bank 150, presented by Premier Plastics, also joined the main event Outlaw Late Model Tour. Tickets available $20 and $15 in advance, $20 on race day, featuring the CRA Super Series going 150 laps and $20,000 to win. And the main event Outlaw Late Model Tour back the first time for the Outlaws 
at Berlin Raceway on June the 10th. Details online, tickets available, and more, berlinraceway.com.